No. No, we must wait until the war is over. But the war might go on forever. When it comes to the classics of television, many never want them to end. Whether it be because they love the characters, they love the stories, or it's just a show they love to watch. Having a show end after so long a run is never fun. For the show Alo Alo, that was the case. This was a classic series that lasted 10 seasons and was a global success in all the ways that mattered, including being seen in 56 countries. While it ended in 1992, its cast went on in various ways. So allow us to show you Alo Alo, then and now. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Gordon K. Starting off, we have Gordon K, a man who sadly had a very easy name to say, but often got it butchered when people tried to type it up. But regardless, he endured, and before Alo Alo came about, he was an appreciated man in the acting world, doing All Creatures Great and Small, Are You Being Served, and the film version of Porridge. So he had some clout before getting auditioned for Alo Alo. And when he got cast, it was a perfect match, because he was there throughout the entire series run. He was a beloved character as René Artois, the cafe owner who just had that look about him that you couldn't ignore. And due to his fame, you'd think he would have gotten a lot of roles after that. But he actually worked little after Alo Alo, except for a role in the 1993 TV film The Bullion Boys, opposite David Jason and the 2001 comedy series Revolver, which used a lot of old school sitcom stars. Which is not a bad thing for sure, but it's not exactly the best way to say we appreciate your acting talent. In short, he fell into a trap of being typecast, or being associated with one kind of role. Though to be clear, he never hated Alo Alo at all. He loved the character, and said, Honestly, there is no other character I would rather have played. He passed away sadly at the age of 75. Carmen Silvera Both on and off screen, Carmen Silvera has a very interesting history. You see, she was supposed to be dead, as an early incident in life. You see, she was supposed to be dead, as an early incident in life almost landed her on a boat during World War II that was to evacuate her to Canada. But at the last possible minute, she was scrubbed from the passenger list, and that saved her life, as the Germans went on to sink that boat. She would later go on and do some acting roles, Z Cars and BB Soap Compact before being cast in Allo Allo as Edith Artois, the wife of René. But sadly, not unlike her on-screen husband, she wasn't someone that was able to break the chains of that show and land in big roles after the series ended in 1992. She would go on to be in That's Showbiz, a stage musical written by Allo Allo co-creator Jimmy Perry at the Wimbledon Theatre in South London. She also appeared in Revolver. She did live a long life though, and passed away at the age of 80. Vicky Michelle the path of Vicky Michelle post Alo Alo was definitely one not many saw coming, because she not only embraced her celebrity status that she got after playing Yvette Carte Blanche for so long, she went and used that celebrity status to get onto various other TV shows solely because she was a celebrity. No, really, we mean it. She was in shows like Blanky Blank, Celebrity Squares, Celebrity Master Chef, The Weakest Link, Big Brother's Big on the Side, and more, up to the 14th series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here in 2014. That's a lot of celebrity shows to go on. But hey, it was her choice. She never forgot her roots though, and repeatedly turned up in stage performances of their show, and stayed in touch with much of the cast. Furthermore, Vicky is big into charity. She's helped out Lady Taverners, Haven House Children's Hospice, AA Dog Rescue, among many others. So while not the most typical of paths, she absolutely did go and find her own. Francesca Goncha Playing Maria Recamier, Francesca Goncha was another who used her celebrity in curious ways. And one way she no doubt wishes she didn't. In terms of Alo Alo, she was someone who went and left the show after its third season. The reason for that being, she got the role of Amanda Parker in the BBC drama series Howard's Way, 
So, like many actors before her, she thought she saw a better chance for her there and took it. Though, ironically, that's not what happened. Rather, after Howard's Way, she went and stopped doing acting for the most part, outside of some small parts in certain productions. But that didn't stop her from going and making things in media behind the camera. In 1993, she helped set up the publishing arm of a movie studio with the now-shamed Harvey Weinstein, publishing the likes of Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction script, which is, of course, one of the best films ever made. She's even made her own films, though none reached major status. And after all that, she went and basically disappeared from the public eye, which is again her choice. Sue Hodge In Allo Allo, Sue Hodge played Mimi Labonk, and after the series ended, she didn't do so much acting as she went and took part in various stage and musical productions. She also was one of many who did the stage tour show of Allo Allo when that came about. She has lived a nice life and married a musician, and then recently she went and wrote an autobiography that was aptly titled Mimi's Memoirs, showing that while she may not have become the biggest star, she does appreciate the show that made her name special in its own way. Kirsten Cook Now let's look at one of the most iconic characters of the bunch, Kirsten Cook, who played the resistance leader who uttered one of the show's most endearing catchphrases. Listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. Don't move. What? My name is Michelle Dubois. Time is very short. Listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. She had some success both before and after Allo Allo and appeared on various comedy sketch shows and even children's programming. But more than likely, she'll be remembered for that catchphrase because how she said it was so perfectly delivered that you couldn't help but get it stuck in your head. Kenneth Connor. You know him in Allo Allo as Monsieur Alphonse, but to be clear, Kenneth Connor was already a very established man in the realm of television before he ever graced the sitcom. He took over from Peter Sellers in Ted Ray's radio show, occasionally appeared on The Goon Show, and starred in no fewer than 17 of the Carry On films, as well as many other big screen and stage roles. After the show ended, he went right into another long-running series as Uncle Sammy Morris in Heidi High. And as a testament to just how much he loved acting, he was doing roles until almost literally the day he died. Richard Marner Richard Marner was one of the many military leaders that appeared in Allo Allo, and the Russian-born actor was very proud of his heritage, even though his nation let him down many times. But he did return to his country after Allo Allo ended, in order to see the imperial flag raised high once again after the fall of communism. Acting-wise, he got to play a Russian president in the 2002 Jack Ryan spy thriller The Sum of All Fears which was his only post Allo Allo screen role besides a spot in Lovejoy. Still, he lived a long life and died in Scotland at the age of 83. Guy Siner Guy Siner arguably had one of the longest careers post Allo Allo in comparison to some of his cast, mainly because he didn't just go and do live action roles. He did a lot of voice acting, for example, you'll find his name attached to several Star Wars video game titles, and he was even in SpongeBob SquarePants for a bit. He did get some live action parts too, and was also part of the Allo Allo stage show when it came around. Sam Kelly In the show, Sam Kelly was Captain Hans Gearing, but both before and after his lovely show, he had plenty of credits that he could be proud of. He was the second lead in Gwen Taylor's vehicle, Barbara, which ran for eight years, and Bunny Warren in Porridge. After, he was the father of Bill Bailey's character, Manny, in Black Books, and appeared in My Family, EastEnders, and the Mike Lay films, Grown Ups, Topsy Turvy, All or Nothing, and Grief. Sadly, despite all of his roles, he died of cancer at the age of 70. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the cast of Allo Allo and how they went on after the show ended in 1992? Do you think that some of the cast lived on better than others? Which cast members are you a bit sad about in terms of them not getting more opportunities in the world of film and television? 
What do you personally remember from Alo Alo? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.